Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Nokia Sleep. This is a sleep tracker that you stuff under your mattress and it, like many IoT devices, connects up to your Wi-Fi and transmits your sleep data to the cloud so you can look at it later on your phone. So you don't have to go to bed with any sensors on. You put this under your mattress, go to sleep like you usually do. When you wake up, you get some data about how well you slept. And we're going to be taking a look and seeing just how accurate this thing is in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. I should also mention that Nokia is an occasional sponsor here on the channel. We've done some sponsored posts involving some of their other health products, but they are not sponsoring this video. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is reviewing what you're about to see before it is uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how this thing works. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. It is pretty much a big air bladder, actually. It's got a little pump inside of its electronics section, uh, which is right underneath this pad here. And what it does is it sits under your mattress. You want to put it about chest height, but again, under the mattress so you don't feel it. And what will happen is when you first put the mattress down on top of it, it calibrates itself. And then after that, uh, every time you get into bed, it will detect the weight of you getting into bed. And then it will, based on your movement, determine how well you are sleeping. It's not quite the uh, Star Trek sick bay bed that measures all your vital signs, but it's doing it through um, vibrations and uh, overall movement that it's feeling through the mattress. And it's able to track a couple of things, including your sleep duration. Uh, that's the onset of sleep and how long it takes for you to wake up. Uh, your sleep cycles, light, deep, or REM sleep. And I'm guessing it's measuring that based on your respiration and uh, how much movement it's detecting throughout the night. It's not perfect in, in detecting when you actually go to sleep, which I'll talk about in a minute. It also can do heart rate. I'm not sure how it does that. Uh, through a mattress, but I'm guessing it is looking at some of the movement it's detecting from your respiration and maybe making some calculations from that. So I would not consider this to be a medical device per se, but it will give you enough information throughout the course of a few nights sleep to give you some idea as to how you're doing. And there's also a microphone built in, which you can disable. That microphone is designed to detect snoring to see if you are snoring during the course of the evening. Now what will happen here is you put this under the mattress, you have the little cable here sticking out at the end. It's just a standard USB connector, it's a nice braided cable. You plug this into the power adapter that it comes with and that will power it up. Uh, through their app, which I'll show you in a minute, you connect it up to your Wi-Fi. It uses the Nokia Health app on Android or iOS. It also connects the, the data that you collect from this to uh, the Apple Health app or the uh, Google Health app so that you can use it with other products that may not support that Nokia app. So it is very uh, friendly with sharing data with other applications on your phone with your permission, of course. It also has some limited IFTTT support. Now this is a personal data tracker, meaning that it only tracks data for one individual. So if you have somebody else who shares the bed with you and you want to track their data, they'll have to get one for themselves and you can pair it up with their app. There's no limit to how many of these things you can have working in the house. They uh, just get paired up with each individual's data and you are off and running. This costs $99 at the time that I'm recording this video. And we're calling this a Nokia product for now, but it's possible that it will be changing its name to Withings soon. Uh, what happened was Nokia acquired this company a few years ago, and they've decided to get out of the health business and have basically sold the company back to the people that sold it to them in the first place. So this might be called the Withings Sleep uh, by the time you see this. So if you're seeing Nokia throughout this review, uh, this is the product you are looking for. It's just that they have changed some branding due to some business decisions that they made, but the product itself and the app uh, should largely be the same. So let's take a look now at the app and see how it collects your data. So here is the Nokia Health app, and we've covered how this app works with some of their other products in those other videos, which you can find linked down below. So we're going to focus on the sleep portion here, which is the data we're getting back from this Nokia Sleep. Now I've been uh, sleeping on this now for a couple of nights to get a feel for how it works, and this is what you get when you wake up in the morning. So they'll give you a sleep score, and you can see I did pretty well last night because my wife and kids are out of town for a couple of days, so I've had uh, very peaceful evenings here in the house. But one of the problems I'm finding with this is that because it is basing my sleep on movement, uh, it's not actually getting the moment I fall asleep. So let me show you what I mean by that. So you can see right here it's saying I was in 
uh, light sleep at 11.06 and then deep sleep at 11.10. But the reality is I was up watching Westworld at that time. I didn't get to sleep until about 12.15 or 12.30 when I finally turned everything off for the night. Uh, so you can see here, it thought I was sleeping when I wasn't. Again, because I was in bed, it felt me getting into bed and I wasn't moving all that much. Uh, you can see here, it shows me awake from uh, 12.10 to 12.25 when I was getting the dog settled for the night. And then I finally went to bed around this time. But I don't think you go from being awake to being in REM sleep that quickly. So it's not always detecting things accurately, but I think it's accurate enough in the sense that once I am asleep, it's uh, looking at my movement here throughout the evening. So you can see I had a very uh, uninterrupted night of sleep until about uh, six or so when the dog woke up and then I got uh, moving again. Again, it's got another period of REM sleep here that I don't think I was in. So uh, by and large, it's going to give you a good idea roughly as to what your sleep patterns are, but unfortunately there's no way to really adjust this to tell it, hey, I wasn't actually sleeping from 11 to midnight. I was just in bed watching TV. It's having a very hard time discerning uh, between the two. So that was a little bit of a disappointment there. Uh, down here, you've got a little more data that you can uh, go through. So it keeps the total duration of what it thought you were sleeping for, uh, which again is probably not right. I maybe only got about six hours and 18 minutes of sleep last night, given I was up for an hour when it thought I was sleeping. Uh, the depth here is how much of a deep sleep you went into. So again, how often were you completely not moving with uh, respiration that uh, indicated as such. So uh, that is rated good this evening. My regularity is good, which means how well I slept over the last seven days. So that is good. I'm doing well with it there. Uh, and then it also shows me how often I was interrupted throughout the course of my uh, sleeping. Usually that involves a child or a dog waking me up. It also has a thing here about your time to get up. So in other words, how long were you awake for before you actually got out of bed and got moving? And this one I found to be also a little bit uh, tricky in its accuracy because it was three minutes this morning, but yesterday it said it was 22 minutes or something. So uh, again, I haven't been too crazy about the accuracy of that. Now it also tries to detect how long it takes for you to get to sleep. And you can see here, it says that my time to sleep was 22 minutes, which of course we know is not correct because I was watching Westworld for at least an hour. Uh, so what I can do here uh, is edit this a little bit to make it more accurate. So I'm gonna go in here and actually say that I went to sleep at uh, 12.25 a.m. And that will hopefully get us a more accurate picture of my evening here. So I'm going to click on save. It's going to update my sleep score now. And I think we might see that decline. Actually, no, it's still showing me as a pretty good night's sleep, even though my duration was not as long as I would have liked. So it's putting me in this uh, less than sweet spot, but apparently I had enough deep sleep throughout the evening to compensate for that. Uh, so you do have the ability to adjust the time that you went to bed and the time you woke up. So if you know you were up for an hour, you can make that adjustment after the fact. But um, again, it's not going to be a perfect detector because it is only measuring based on motion. Now, as I mentioned at the outset, this does have the ability to track your heart rate throughout the evening. And I was surprised reading through the mattress that it wasn't all that off from what I expected. So if you look down here at the bottom, it's got my heart rate at 70 beats per minute. Uh, that was the average. You can dig further into the data and you can get a peak, a low, and then a chart here that gives you your heart rate throughout the evening. And a few months ago, we reviewed the Steel HR watch from Nokia, which also has sleep tracking capabilities built into it because the battery life was very good on it. So you could strap it to your wrist and leave it on throughout the night. It would detect your movement, but it would also take active measurements of your heart rate using its heart rate function that's built into it. It's got a little sensor that will uh, read it from your wrist. And the numbers here were very close to what I was getting with the watch using its sleep function, which has a more accurate heart rate checker. So whatever they're doing here uh, seems to be pretty close and seems to be working. So that was kind of a surprise, again, because it's reading it through a mattress without any other sensor. And then you also see here at the bottom, it, I was looking to see if I snorted all throughout the night. And the good news is I did not, and I had a very quiet evening. Now you also have the ability to go back in time and see how you slept on other nights. So I can uh, swipe to the left here and see what the last couple of days were looking like. And you get all that data you saw before. You can also go down to the bottom here and see how you've been doing over the course of the week. 
Uh, so the kids have been gone Saturday and Sunday. You can see how much better my sleep was on those two nights than the other ones there. Uh, Thursday night, my little one kept waking up and that certainly interrupted my sleep. Fellow parents out there, I'm sure you have experienced this yourself and now you can see it visually on your app when you wake up in the morning. Uh, you can also look at a month review uh, and see how you were doing on each day of the month for your sleeping too. And as I mentioned, it also works with the Apple Health app along with the Android Health app, so you can integrate the data from this with other devices that may not support the Nokia Health app. So you can see here we've got all of this information collected from my Apple Watch, and then the sleep analysis is in here from the Nokia Sleep device, and you can see what it looks like here. The data is the same, uh, but it's just presented in a different way along with some of the other devices that you might have. So it might be useful to put your data in here, but you can also, of course, look at it with just the Nokia app if you so choose. Now, the Nokia Sleep also integrates with IFTTT, and this is a great application that connects a lot of your other IoT devices together. Uh, so what you can do with IFTTT is have the Nokia Sleep trigger something to happen when you get into bed. So I can go over here to Nokia Sleep, and I can say, when I get into bed, uh, have it maybe lock the doors or check the doors to make sure they're locked. Or maybe I can have it dim the lights or change the color temperature. Basically what happens is when you get into bed, it will trigger something to happen based on that action. They also smartly included some things here to have a uh, start time for these events to occur. So if, for example, the dog jumps on the bed at five o'clock, it won't activate this trigger. It's only going to happen here in this instance between uh, 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. And I can tell it which sensor I wanted to trigger from and I can create the trigger and then I can go over to the that. And so, for example, I could have it uh, go to my Philip Hughes bulb here, for example, and set a scene or turn off the lights or I could even have it tweet if I wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can do that kind of stuff. And you can, of course, have multiple uh, things set up. So you could have it check the doors to make sure they're locked when you get into bed and turn the lights down. Whatever you want to do, you can configure through IFTTT, provided all of the uh, devices you're working with are also compatible with this platform, but many are. But my only issue with this IFTTT support is that it only detects whether you get into bed or out of bed. Uh, it doesn't do something like maybe recognize a deep sleep event and make sure the lights are turned off, for example. So it would have been cool to have a few more options on this, but I still think it's kind of neat that you could just get into bed and have all this stuff happen uh, once you do that. So overall, I think this is a pretty decent sleep tracker. It's not any better or worse than other sleep trackers out there, but I think it has an edge in the sense that you don't have to keep batteries charged or have to tell it when you're about to go to bed. It just detects you getting into the bed and begins tracking data when it senses your weight on it. The only downside to it is that it really doesn't know when you are trying to go to sleep versus maybe just reading a book or watching TV or something. So having the ability to tell the device that I do plan to go to bed now might help in its accuracy a little bit. Maybe they could attach it to IFTTT so that when your light goes off, it then begins tracking your data and trying to figure out how long it takes for you to actually fall asleep. I think that would make this a lot more accurate. But that said, uh, it's nice to have something that can collect data without you having to tell it to do so, so that when you wake up in the morning, you have what you need to start making decisions to improve your sleep habits. And that's what I've been seeing with a bunch of these Nokia products is that they're not always giving you the best data, but they're giving you data that you can make decisions from. And over the course of time, you can kind of begin seeing the trend lines that you need to uh, better improve your health. We certainly saw that with the scale that I talked about a few weeks ago in my weight loss video. Uh, that data really does help me maintain my weight. It's never perfectly accurate every day, but again, looking at the trend lines, you, be, you can begin to see how the impact of decisions can uh, be seen in the data as you uh, progress through a month. And this product is no different from that. So uh, again, if you're trying to really get better about sleeping, I think you can really start experimenting with different things before you go to bed to see what kind of impact it has. And again, if there was some way just to tell it when you plan to fall asleep, I think that would be a big improvement. So that's going to do it for the Nokia Sleep. And this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.